Hey, disturbing listeners, love is blind. Let's watch. Yeah, there, there's a reason why she liked you. And there's a reason why she loves you. Yeah, well, thanks for saying that. Cheers, bro. Saying that, bro. Cheers. Cheers. How do you feel? I just want to respect what Hannah said to me. So I'm just going to wait until she comes yeah. in. And, yeah. You know? Feel it. See what she says. I'll say you did. Oh, you will. You will. But he's essentially in sales. He could yeah. be manipulating yeah. me. Yeah, he could. I don't know. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah, I thought something similar that he is essentially in sales and. For, I, I've, I've seen this before among people that I know in my life where they are very interested in their sales job. They like sales. I hated sales. The few jobs that I had, I worked at Foot Locker at, at the age of 22, downtown Seattle at the, the main mall, Westlake Mall. And I hated that job. <laughs> that my The boss, the manager would be like, you got to try to sell shoes. And if we don't have their size, which we often didn't, you have to bring out other shoes from other sizes. And I was like, I hate that as a customer. I'm not bringing out the wrong size of shoe and try to foist it upon them. That's like horrible. And he'd be like, you got to do it. And he was a dick. And I told him one day to take this job and shove it up his ass. And I walked out. I don't, I don't think I said it like that, but I did suddenly quit and he was not happy. <laughs> I mean, anyway, I he didn't hate me because I was a bad salesperson. He was just a dick in general. But I've had other sales jobs-ish and have just hated it. Some people love it, and God bless them. And they can, if they're balanced, leave it at work and not bring it home to their spouses or their personal life. But for some people, it's just a pathway in the brain that becomes very habitual for them. And when they are at work, that's all they're doing. And then they come home and, you know, we're all trying in conflict. We're always trying to convince people of something, our, our partners of something, but it can be extremely hurtful to be the target of someone in your personal life who is trying to sell to you and manipulate you the way a salesperson would. So it's possible that he has that habit. How is it? Uh, that man is... I don't know. Like yeah, Hannah wants to vent, which would be normal, but she's refraining because she doesn't want to talk shit in front of uh, of Brittany. But she's also friends with Brittany. You know, the bonding that these folks do in the pods, in the lounges, is intense. Uh, and a lot of the folks who go to this show together remain friends forever. So she's at a, a at a quandary. Emotionally, she, it looks like, is really disgusted and grossed out and really doesn't like Leo. So it would be hard to refrain from, you know, telling Brittany how you feel, right? But I think Hannah also is like, ah, I don't want to get in the way of someone here. Tonight he was like, I want to have my date with you first. Like, and I want to get there with you so bad. Like, I'm there. And then today he's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's like totally like a mutual breakup. And I was like, is it? Because I was like, I don't know. I just like thought of you and stuff and like how special you are. And like, why would you drag me along and you along if you like knew that Brittany was the one? Brittany's the yeah, uh, and it's normal to have some ambiguity or to really connect with more than one person. Uh, we've seen some people on the show connect with three. Sometimes we'll hear from people on the show, cast members, that there were major connections that they didn't even include in the edit. If I remember right, I feel like Zeneb said that she really connected with one or two other people that just weren't included. So, you know, it's normal. I don't know how normal it is to wait till day 10, but you know, it happens. But she is disclosing to Brittany that Leo was pressuring her to, or at least trying to control the narrative that it was mutual. And it, you know, it might have been in the end. We just, anyway. They would not know who I was. It's just how I was feeling. Okay. Okay. Uh, Leo, I tried to start writing a sweet letter full of love and my feelings towards you. But the truth is I crossed it all out because I'm still hurt. Okay. So on one hand, this looks like they are not going to 
leave the pods together. But sometimes people will have a little switcheroo. You know, they'll start positive and then negative or start negative. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see where this goes. <sighs> I will say that using pink ink on white paper would be hard to read. I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, matches her outfit. <laughs> Hold on. Sure. After the second day, you were the only one for me. The only person I look forward to talking to every day. You have never been anything except completely honest to me about any other connection you have. Okay, so she's telling us, she's telling him, but we're overhearing that she thinks that he's never lied and he has been very honest. It would have been easier for you not to tell me that. <sighs> but right now, I feel like our connection has been tainted by your words to someone else. I feel like it was ruined by how things happen. Okay, so this is looking like she's breaking up with him. And interesting. So she's saying that it's been tainted. Yeah, on one level, you could... So there's two different things I'll say. One is, is that as you are heading into a situation like this where you barely know the person and you're going purely off of feelings and, you know... A lot of conversations, but not a lot of time. Any fly in the ointment is going to throw things off, right? And to have the fly in the ointment of his behavior towards Hannah the night before and her, Brittany, hearing about it is the, or at the very, or maybe the fly in the ointment is just the prolonged triangle that lasted just a little bit too long. It, you know, it makes you wonder, and I'm guessing he's going to wonder this for a while, if he had just proposed to Brittany the day before even, if there would be a complete, I'm guessing there would be a completely different situation. So it's just, it just lasted a little bit too long and, and presented with Hannah saying, uh, I, right. Cause you know, Hannah tells Brittany, Hey, I chose Nick and they're all yay. And then Taylor's doing her her jumping, and then after you know, and then Hannah goes into a meeting with with Leo and comes back, and and Hannah's like, yeah, he didn't let me break out, and then, so if you're if you're Brittany, you're just like at the pinnacle, and then you come back and you're like, wait, so you had decided, and then he he got all up in arms. What is this? It's consistent with his desire to let it wait, but odd the way, especially when we contrast it with the way Marissa and Bowden and Ramses uh, approached it. But anyway, so uh, that's, you know, that's one angle, the, the fly in the ointment. The other is that she, Brittany, just heard some data about the guy that she wouldn't want to spend the rest of her life with that was highly concerning, massive red flag, right? I don't know if abusive is the word that they would use, but intimidating, coercive, scary. <laughs> and if you're Brittany, you're just like, oh, that's a red flag. And I don't know if I want to be this person. Because obviously everyone knows what happened between you and Hannah. When I saw all the girls this morning, I feel like they think I'm settling for you or that I'm just fine with being your second choice. And I had that wave of cold, emotionless, feeling that came over me again. I wish it didn't, but it did. I'm still hurt. Yeah, I, I'm guessing a lot of the audience is happy that this is happening. I, I, as a therapist, don't have any emotion or I know enough as a therapist to reserve judgment. I, I just don't know. Uh, I can see myself having sympathy if I knew all these people. I could see myself having sympathy for all of them. And it's not hard for me to imagine that. I could see a scenario where he has 
some relational traumas that point him in a direction, maybe particularly when he's stressed out and feeling insecure as they would in the pods, even in the lounge. And normally he's not so braggy about things. I know people in my personal life who I really, really love, who under, including myself, <laughs> I guess, under uh, stressful circumstances, their more uh, unfortunate personality traits will emerge. And maybe that's the case for him. And he was too by the book about waiting too long. He just locked in on a principle, like, I'm not going to make a choice in, until the end. And I, and also maybe a bit of a blind spot to the bigger picture and uh, taking care of other people and maybe a, a bit of, and he admitted that he was overreactive to Hannah the, the night before, but given, you know, all the sun shining up the butt that he was doing with Hannah about like, oh, you guys are going to be perfect. And he's such, he's so wise and he's better than me. He's such a great person. You know, talking about Nick, it just comes across over the top and made up and sincere. It could be sincere, but it, it seemed over the top. And so then you wonder, was he really apologizing? Is he really sorry? Kind of throws that into question. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, interesting. Interesting storyline. Interesting storyline. Wow. Yeah, really interesting. <laughs> I, I've been wondering because it's it's almost the end of episode four, right? And usually by now they're already at the getaway, and, and so I was, I'm wondering why why is why are there why is there so many episodes dedicated to the pods? And it, it's it's completely because of those four people, Nick and Hannah and Leo and Brittany, because the others are so non drama, <laughs> the Garretts and the Taylors and the Steph. Stephen and the Monicas and Tim, and Alex, Tyler and Ashley. There's just no, there's just and and the Ramses and the Marissa. Uh, at least I think so. There's just no drama. So it's interesting that the the four would have so much and the others would have so little. This is my biggest fear that would happen and it happened. Oh. I'm still gonna tell you that I love you. Like, I love you so much. I know you liked hearing it. Ick, so he's doing that Matthew thing of inserting thoughts into someone else's mind under stress. Like when Matthew was saying, I, I know you wanna be with me, I know you love me, or something like that. He says, so if we analyze this, it's hard to know, but the hypothesis I would have is that he has an impulse to say that he loves her because he does, and let's go with that. And he then immediately is wondering how is she receiving this? And there's a big question mark there. We're in new territory now. She might not actually be happy to hear that but he needs her to, and you know, it would be normal for anyone in his shoes to want that, but it's another thing to say it out loud as a way to manipulate or convince himself of. He might just be thinking that of like, she she wants that, you know, the way Matthew, I have America wrapped around my finger. It's a, it's a way of uh, coping with stress to speak to yourself, maybe even out loud. I'm still gonna tell you that I love you. Like, I love you so much. I know you liked hearing it. I do. Uh, <laughs> did it work? Did the manipulation work? Or did she actually uh, uh, want to hear that? Is she going to change her mind? Uh, huh. Interesting. This episode is called What the Duck? Do they see a duck in Mexico, is my guess. I'm just gonna read what I wrote you, okay? Okay. I remember our first date clear as day. We were so It looked like he got a ring out and he is in the kneeling position on one knee. It looks like he's about to propose. What's happening? Spot number four. 
I love your voice and every word you say. I found my queen from Baltimore. <laughs> <You're> so stupid. <laughs> I promise to always keep you safe. Someone in the comments made sure to note that most, if not all, the cast is not actually from Washington, D.C. They are from Maryland and Virginia. Also, West Virginia. Hannah says she's from West Virginia, or I don't. I don't. She was raised in West Virginia, so she might live, you know, nearby. So, you know, someone wanted to distance the cast from <laughs> DC. I think. <laughs> oh, why'd I use my big dumb brain, overthinking from the start? I damn near went insane. You taught me to follow my heart. <laughs> Your patience, grace, and so much strength. You are the definition of virtue. I mean this from every part of me. I'm suddenly wondering about farting in the pods. Can you turn off your microphone? If I think it's because he was rhyming with heart, and I think I wondered if he was going to say fart. <laughs> and I wonder also about people leaving the pods having fumigated with their... Because um, I've had some recent personal experiences that uh, remind me that spending time outside of your normal routine of food and whatnot can lead to gas. <laughs> and so uh, I wonder if a lot of people are having more gas. And then the people, next people in the pods, do, uh, uh, is there a problem there? I'm guessing there are stories. There's been hundreds of people on the show. So there's gotta be some stories there. I'm so in love with you. Is that a ceremonial necklace of some sort? I, I, I don't know what that is. The tassels, it's like uh, light blue beads. So now it's time for me to ask I am down on one knee. Wait, where in the world are we right now? What the duck? <laughs> he is actually gonna, uh, is she going to, uh, I don't know what's happening. I thought she just broke up with him, or did she not? Brittany, Nicole. Yeah, if he was proposing and she was gonna say no, she would stop him right now, right? She would, no, 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 uh, no. Don't don't do that. So this is now heading in a direction of yes. This is a roller coaster, y'all. Wisniewski. Will you marry me? Oh my god. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I could see them working out. They probably won't because most couples don't. But I could see them working out. Also, as a citizen, as a as a fan of the show, I'm so glad because I want to see them interact with each other <laughs> in person. I'm so curious how they're going to interact with each other. I'm so curious. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, all's well that ends well with the pods anyway, because there was all these questions about mistakes and bad personality traits, and we're kind of all right back to where we started a few episodes ago. <laughs> so, all right. I feel weird. I'm sitting down. I didn't know you were not. <laughs> oh, my God. This feels not real yet, but... I know. I... All right, I want to remind everyone that we have an audio podcast. You can go to your podcast app and subscribe to Psychology in Seattle. A lot of the audio, if not all of the audio, podcast episodes appear on YouTube as well. They're the ones typically that don't have any video in it, but it can be a lot easier just have it on your phone because they get downloaded automatically. You can listen in the car or when you're doing chores. That, that's what I do. I listen to a lot of podcasts that way. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.